What makes Second Life unique is that the world itself is built by its users. Collaboration and creation are the fundamental part of what makes Second Life a thriving metaverse. Now, Lina Lab introduced something that takes that even further, and it is called GLTF. GLTF changes the way that we bring our art into Second Life. With just a few clicks, you can now import a full PBR asset, textures, rigs, materials, everything inside one single file. Today, I'm going to show you exactly how it works and how to bring your assets from Blender or Substance Painter straight into SL. Hi, my name is Axel and I'm a Second Life creator and welcome to another episode of Second Life University. Before diving in, let's talk about what actually GLTF is. GLTF stands for Graphic Language Transmission Format. It is a format used to transmit your model from one program to another without having to move a dozen assets and materials and plug everything back in every single time. You can think of it like the JPEG of the 3D world. It keeps everything in one clean package. You can store your mesh and all the materials and make it look right. Before GLTF, Second Life used an older shading method that faked reflection and light. That worked when hardware was limited, but now we have something way, way better, and it is called Physically Based Rendering, or you may know it as PBR. What PBR basically means, it is that your material now reacts to the light the same way that real surfaces do. Instead of painting fake highlights or shadow, the object now responds naturally. Metal shines, glass reflect, and rough surface scatter light. It is the same system used in Blender, Unreal, and Unity, and many more apps and games and programs. PBR uses a few texture maps that work together to describe how a surface behave. We have base color, which is the actual color of the surface, and sometimes that might include transparency if it is needed. Then we have our normal map, which adds fine details like bumps and grooves without changing the geometry. We have our black and white maps. Talic map, which tells Second Life which parts behave like conductive metal and which do not. We have our roughness map, which controls how polished or matte the surface is. And finally, we have our ambient occlusion, which adds soft shadowing to the corners and tight areas and it gives depth. These last three maps are actually combined together to make a single map that we call ORM. Color, normal, and ORM combined makes what we call a Second Life material. GLTF comes in two versions, expanded and packed. That GLTF is the expanded version. I want you to think about this like a recipe, where it points to all the ingredients, but everything stays separate, so you can still open and edit them individually. The GLB is the packed version. It's more like a ready-to-serve meal. It takes all those ingredients and crumbs them into a compact file, ready to share or import. All right, let's jump into Blender and I'll show you exactly how I prepare this character and how to bring it inside of Second Life using GLTF. Before we begin texturing, let's go to Edit, Preferences, Add-on, and search GLTF. Let's make sure that the plugin is enabled. And also, we need to go here on Preference and enable Shader Editor Add-on. This is not on by default. Then, let's save Preferences. Now I imported my Mesh model and we're gonna go to the Shading tab. Make sure that you're in the Material tab. Here you can visualize all the materials that we're going to need to shade. We're going to begin by right-clicking the bike in the viewport and then clicking on the bike shader. Drag our base color map in the node editor and make sure that the color space is set to sRGB. Then we're going to connect our color to the principal BSDF shader. Our next map is the normal. Make sure that the color space is set to non-color in this one. This map cannot be directly connected to the shader. We're gonna have to press Shift A and search for a normal map vector node. Now we can plug the color to the color of the normal map node and the normal map node to the normal. Our next map is the metallic map. It can be plugged directly into the metallic node. However, as always, make sure that the color space is set to non-color. 
Our roughness map also needs to be set to non-color and can be plugged directly into the roughness channel. The AO map is going to require its own dedicated channel. We're going to press Shift A and write GLTF and then drop a GLTF material output. Then we can drag and drop our AO inside of the node editor and connect the color to the occlusion side. We also have an emissive map, which it is supported by Second Life. An emissive map allows your item to emit light in certain colors in certain locations of the item. Think of it like the default glow. This map can be plugged in this section. And as you can see, the lights start to emit from the wheels. And here it is. This is the first shader of the bike completed. Now we're going to repeat the same process for the other glass and saddle. In this case, the only difference is that the glass is transparent and you can notice that the alpha value has been reduced, so the item is going to showcase as transparent. For the saddle, we're going to try a different scenario. First, I'm going to plug the base color in normal exactly as we did before, but now I'm going to bring our ORRM map, Occlusion Metallic Roughness. I'm going to start first by generating a GLTF material output. This is to address the AO part of that map. And then I'm going to look for a separate color node. Let's make sure that the ORM map is set to non-color and that the separate color is set to RGB and then we're going to plug it. And now we're going to use the red channel as in O in the occlusion, the G channel as in R roughness in the roughness and the blue channel as in M to metallic. And here you have it. This is how you plug correctly an ORM map. Then we're going to add an emissive and the bike is finally completely textured. We're going to bring our bike now to Second Life. To do that is pretty simple. Let's go on files, export and find the GLTF 2.0 exporter. We're going to select a folder where we want our item to be. And we're going to make sure that we are selecting the gltf.glb version. Also in the include, let's write limit to selected items. We're going to give it a name and then we're going to press export. We are now ready to import our item inside of Second Life. First, we're going to go here to build, upload, and we're going to select mesh model. Then we're going to select our bike and press open. And here it is in the Second Life Importer. We have a preview of our item. We're now ready to set the level of detail for the item. In this case, the low and lowest will be set to zero. We're going to calculate and we're trying to get around a length impact of 10. We are having 13, so I'm going to also reduce a little bit of the medium until I can hit roughly 10 length impact. And I'm going to press upload. We're going to drag our bike, which appeared in our inventory, to the ground. And here it is. We're finally ready to bring the textures in Second Life. To do that is the same exact process, except we're going to select material instead of model. We're going to use the same bike file and press bulk upload all, and then upload after we confirm the cost. After all the materials have finally loaded, it's going to be as easy as drag and dropping them in the correct spot. Glass is going to go to the glass. Bike is going to be our main texture. And saddle is going to fill the rest of the details. You're going to notice that there is a shadow in here and that is because that's where the character is going to go and it's going to cast a shadow over our bike. So don't worry about it for now. We're going to do the character right now in Substance Painter and we're going to get this product complete. In this video, we're going to simply cover the exporting process to SL, but we will definitely do a deeper dive in this topic. For now, after your asset is textured, go to File, Export Texture and then Global Settings. Make sure the destination you select is correct. And finally, we're going to use this preset, GLTF PBR Meta Roughness. Then it's as easy as pressing export. After all the files are exported, we can see both the extended version and the condensed version. In this case, the GLB file is everything we're going to need. Now we can import the GLB from Substance Painter in the same exact way we imported the one from Blender. Reduce LID and press upload. 
drag the model and we're ready for uploading our textures. The process is literally the same. Upload, selecting the GLB, bulk upload all, and then wait for the textures to appear inside our inventory. Let's now apply the materials by drag and dropping them in the correct place. Saddle, hair, glass, clothing, then our bike, and finally, armor. And here it is, our character fully uploaded and textured from Substance Painter. If you want to dive deeper into using PBR material, check out our other video on the Second Life University. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment. I love hearing from you guys. And thank you so much for watching this. And until next time, hope you have fun creating some awesome mesh in Second Life.